Hello, and welcome to ProVax. Before diving into the exciting and interesting world of vaccines, I figured it would be a good idea to start off the channel with a mini-series in which I go over the main classes or types of vaccines. I will also be going into a bit of detail about each class and their respective pros and cons, as well as some examples. The five main classes of vaccines include live attenuated, inactivated, aka dead, subunit, toxoid, and conjugated. I will also end this series with a video featuring the future of vaccines and some of the classes that are experimental, and although they currently aren't in use, they are still pretty cool and good to know in case they ever become a reality in the future. With that being said, let's jump into our first class, live attenuated. These vaccines are the easiest ones to produce and basically involve injuring and weakening the virus or bacteria although it is typically a virus to the point where it can no longer cause harm or effectively replicate within the individual. The method to which they are weakened usually is from one of two ways. The first method is by serially growing the virus in an environment that is not like that of a human's. A common example will be growing the virus in a chicken egg 40 to 50 times so that the virus becomes used to the chicken egg proteins and no longer can bind to the human proteins as well or even at all. See this method works because viruses are sneaky and have evolved over time that way they can mutate on the fly to adapt to their environment. But we can take advantage of this and make the virus mutate to better bind to the chicken egg proteins and lose their affinity for our own human proteins. The second method to attenuating the vaccine is commonly used for bacteria instead of viruses. This process is more complex and requires genetically modifying the bacteria to remove certain genes that cause it to be so virulent. An example of this would be to remove the gene that causes the bacteria to produce a toxin. By doing so, the bacteria will still be able to grow and multiply effectively within the host, but it should not be able to cause as much harm. This is because the bacteria is no longer able to produce the harmful toxin. This class of vaccine is most commonly used for the varicella virus, more commonly known as chickenpox, and also for the bacterium Vibrio cholera, which causes cholera. The pros to this type of vaccine are that it elicits the most natural immune response, and that this type of vaccine is also the most likely to produce an immune response that will provide protection against the intended virus. The cons to this vaccine do unfortunately outweigh the positives. First of all, storage is the biggest issue. These vaccines typically require refrigeration or even freezing, which makes it difficult to distribute to more impoverished regions that might require the vaccine. They also typically require more prep and training to administer. Also, there is technically the remote possibility that the virus can remutate back to the harmful strain and cause infection within the host. This, however, is highly unlikely, but this is also the reason why these vaccines cannot be given to anyone who is immunocompromised, such as anyone with cancers, HIV, or transplants. This is because in their already weakened immune system, the virus has a much higher chance to mutate. All of that being said, this type of vaccine does still produce the best and strongest immune response and is often the first type of vaccine that is made for a specific disease because of its ease of ability to be made before the vaccine can be made with a different class of vaccine. I hope you all like this video and please subscribe so you can see part two of this series where we'll be going into detail about inactivated vaccines. Thank you.